Hey guys, Ashton here from Without Code. Let's take a look at our Infini Scroll widget for our web builder. This is a really unique kind of slider that features scrolling imagery that continues to loop infinitely, and when designed a certain way can be created to look like infinite content as we have here with our electronics and whatnot. The slider is fully seamless and scrolls infinitely on its own without any buttons needed. And this is great for wide panoramic imagery or stitching together multiple images, or in the case of our example here, you can take several items and drop them onto the same background to create this special kind of scroll that seems to literally have no end. This method could be great for displaying products in a store, portfolio items, and much more. Let's jump over to Without Code and take a look at the various ways we can set this thing up. I'm just going to start with a blank page here, and let's begin by jumping into our widgets library. Scroll down to Media, and we'll grab our InfiniScroll widget and drop that onto the page. Nice. And right off the bat, we already see some sample imagery loaded in, giving us a preview of the functionality here in the editor, which is pretty cool. As you can see, the widget container represents exactly where the effect is going to happen, so feel free to place it anywhere on your page that you see fit. And you can use the blue handle down here in the corner to adjust the width of the widget. We have up to 960 pixels wide to work with on a regular row, and you're of course welcome to jump into the row settings and set it to full bleed if you want this to span the entire width of the browser. Don't worry about sizing height right here because we'll be customizing that inside the widget settings panel here, so let's take a closer look inside. Starting of course with our unique ID, just keep something unique typed in here in case you have multiple uses of this widget throughout your page. And this next option, this is important, scroll type. We have multi-image and panoramic. And this is really going to come down to the desired effect that you have for the widget. In short, multi-image allows you to string multiple images together as what's going on here in our default example kind of more like one image repeating itself right now, but you get the idea. You're given various list items here that you can click through, upload multiple images via these list items, and the widget will string them together in an endless scroll in a slider type format. Alternatively, switching this to panoramic, we get an entirely new example shown where the widget uses only one image, but said image is very, very wide. The way the widget will showcase the imagery will really come down to how you prepare your image. Image setup here is very important for this widget, so I'm actually going to come back to this section after I run through the rest of the settings so I can spend a little bit more intricate time on this topic. So for now, let's leave the setting at multi-image. Next up here is a toggle option for enable image links. So toggling this on will simply add an option here in each list item, allowing you to designate links for when the user clicks on any image. These can be internal or external links, just like you're used to having in the builder. Next up is our height parameter. Now remember, width is controlled by sizing the actual widget container on the page, but you can set a specific height here measured in pixels. Furthermore, we have an option here called fixed width and height, which you can toggle on right here, which basically forces the widget to use the exact same width and height for each image in the slider. Now this should only be used when you seek a uniform display of the images in the slideshow. So by default, the widget fills the space needed automatically to account for the width of the slider and the browser. Now if you're wanting images to stitch together perfectly or you're finding that the slider is constraining your images too much by way of the automatic fill, you may want to use this feature. Just remember that if you do, you'll want to prepare each image to maintain the exact same width and height prior to uploading them into the widget. It's actually best practice to set the height and width of the widget container first if you're going to use this setting and then size your images to match. Following that, we have scroll direction to pick from left or right. And finally, scroll speed you can set here as well. Now let's jump into caption setup. We can enable captions inside here with an option for a caption title as well as description displaying in this kind of overlay effect over the image here. Now you can adjust the width of this panel in our design section as we'll see shortly, but this is a stationary panel as opposed to each image having their own caption, so just keep that in mind. So now I want to jump back up and spend a little bit more time talking about our scroll types here, because beyond these two options, like I said, there are various ways that the images will be displayed in this widget based on how you prepare them. So let's switch over to panoramic mode first and give that a closer look. Now, as you might imagine, the simplest way to use this setting would be to drop a single panoramic image into the widget and call it good. But the thing is, this requires a very wide image with a narrow height, and it's suggested to be at least 4,000 to 6,000 pixels wide to give it plenty of space to move across the screen on wider browsers. 
But here's the thing about that. Our builder resizes large images so that they have a maximum width of 1920 pixels for purposes of web optimization. And in most cases with this widget, that's not quite wide enough. You're going to get significant clarity reduction when the page is published. So alternatively, if we scroll down here a bit, you can see for this panoramic option, we have an additional option here for use external URL for panoramic image. And we've added this as an option in case you're having this very same issue I just explained. So in the case that you have a very wide image that you want to use and you don't want to experience any reduction in pixel count, this option is the way to go. Simply enable this option and you'll be then given a new field to type a direct URL to an image file that's hosted offsite. And this can be really any place that hosts images, as long as said host doesn't downsize larger imagery. Dropbox is a good option for this. Some hosts will downsize imagery automatically, so the way to check this is to host the image, and then get the image link, and then visit that link in your browser to download the image back onto your computer, basically to re-download the hosted version of it. That way you can check the dimensions of that version to make sure no reduction took place upon upload. So now let's talk about multi-image mode. And let me switch over to this in the settings. Now this mode works just how it sounds. You can create as many list items as needed for as many images as you have, and you'll be good to go. But this is also another alternative to what we just talked about with panoramic images. So say you have one large image that you want to use, but you don't want to host it externally. What you could do alternatively is split a single large wide image into smaller ones and load them in separately. And that's actually exactly what Brandon did for our live demo that we saw at the very beginning. So let me switch back there really quick. What you might think is one large image here with a gray background and various items placed throughout it has actually been split up into several smaller images and uploaded using this multi-image setting. I'm gonna bring up my finder window really quick to show you more specifically what we're working with here. This long panoramic image here, this was the original. And these subsequent three images are this exact same content, but split up into three different but equal pieces. And they're all at 1920 pixels wide, so no loss of sharpness occurs when uploading them. And you can easily do this with your own images with a quick setup in Photoshop. You can use the slice tool, as Brandon did for this image when prepping it, and divide your wide panoramic image into three or more smaller images that are under 1920 pixels each. If they're just above 1920, it's still recommended that you downsize them yourself before uploading them. One more thing I'll mention here, I want to bring up the full panoramic image once again. You probably noticed that the smaller images have their edges divided over some of these elements in the image. And you'll probably find that your dividing lines for your own won't necessarily be somewhere clean from elements in the image. So when this happens, you have to make sure that every image, every small version of the image is the exact same size, or they won't appear seamless in the widget. Brandon split these up evenly and ended up with three images that are all exactly 1920 by 1102 pixels. And that's how we achieved this true infinity scroll as seen here in the demo. So before we close out, let's jump back into the settings panel in without code and check out the design section, starting with the caption panel width. As I mentioned before, you can adjust that here measured in pixels. And following that is caption panel background color, which you can adjust, as well as the opacity, which you'll find just beneath the color settings inside here. And finally, beneath all of that, you have all of your font, size, color, and alignment settings for both your caption title and description if you have them enabled. So that's our Infinity Scroll widget. Thanks for checking this one out. It's a pretty simple function, but can really be utilized in a number of different ways based on how you approach your image setup. If you have any additional questions or concerns, make sure to check out our docs page on the website for additional walkthroughs or drop us a note in support and we'd be glad to assist. Thanks again for checking out Without Code and we'll see you next time. Take care.